awkwardly behind you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Shaharis. I am supposedly the best man, even though Kenny is the one who's getting married. So it is false advertising, but I will take what I can get. Before I go on, Mr. and Mrs. Man. Mr. and Mrs. Sana. Like that pronunciation? Thank you for raising these two wonderful, beautiful human beings that we all gathered here to celebrate. They turned out just wonderful. Admittedly, I only met Kenny about 13 years ago and Joan only about two days ago. So clearly, I cannot take all of the credit for how they turned out, but you deserve some too. Uh, so Kenny and I were roommates freshman year at Tufts. Today, I get to call this man my brother. Not just because we're both black. that transcends the boundaries and borders of race, religion, culture, sometimes even language. It's been 13 years and we are still learning from each other. Just last month, for example, during the bachelor party in Vegas. <laughs> Kenny introduced me to the concept of twerking. I don't know how all of you seem to know what that is, but... So for those of you who are unfamiliar with twerking, it is a it is a kind of dance that involves the bum and a lot of bouncing around. Thank you, Kenny, for the nightmares. Anyway, the thing that brought this large black man and this medium-sized but incredibly attractive and single Asian man back together is the duct tape of our relationship. Truly, the thing that bonded us, the thing that connected our souls, the thing that fueled our fraternal fire. Really? The thing that separated us from them? Is that love of fried chicken? I kid you not. So, every other night for the better part of the entirety of freshman year, we ordered the buffalo chicken calzone. <laughs> the buffalo chicken calzone is basically a fried chicken tender, a dip, well, it's multiple fried chicken tenders, really, dipped in buffalo sauce and folded into a cheese pizza. That, my friends, is the stuff that friendship is made of. You see, in between stuffing our mouths with food and clogging our arteries, we would talk. Kenny and I talked a lot. I got to learn everything about the Kenny that you all know and love. The resilient, responsible, resourceful, determined, righteous, strong, powerful, <laughs> delicate flower that is Kenny. <laughs> there are a few things in life that we can say with certainty, but I can say two things about this man with absolute certainty. Number one, you will never, ever let down his family. There are three kinds of people in this world, those who can count and those who can't. Now, for all of you who can count, you know you can count on Kenny Bang to do whatever is necessary, whenever it is necessary, to keep his family both safe and happy. I promise you, never have I ever seen a more devoted son, and I bet that never will we ever see a more devoted husband. treats his family is actually how he also treats his church. See, he expresses the fabric of his faith through his service to his community. Whether it's delivering communion to people who cannot physically make it to Mass, or waiting patiently to drive an elderly church member home every time he saw her so she wouldn't have to suffer the heat and cold, that's Kenny. Joan, this is the kind of man that you are marrying. Just think, if he's all of that, and he cooks, and he cleans, and he does dishes, he'll almost be good enough for you. So, uh, for some reason, it is customary for the best men <laughs> to give life and marriage advice to 
the newlyweds. <laughs> Clearly, as someone who is both younger than them and unmarried, I am well suited for this task. <laughs> the following bits of ancient wisdom are excerpts from book one of Shaharis' Handy Dandy Guide to a Happy Marriage. First order of business, first tip, pay attention. Let's talk toilet seats. Oh. Now I know all the women here are gonna totally understand, but Kenny, Kenny, trust me on this. Whatever you do, never ever put down the toilet seat. Screw that, keep it up. Just, it's a sign of weakness. Do not give in, do not let her win. She'll respect you forever. <laughs> Toilet pride. <laughs> Tip number two. Recently, a team of highly educated and sus... Oh, it's my first speech screw up. Recently, a team of highly educated and respected scientists from some university I just made up conducted a study on elderly couples who... <laughs> They're still in love after 30, 40, 50 years of marriage. Now, they found that the one thing that they all had in common, apart from everyone being really old, um, is that these happy geriatrics spent their lives constantly doing new things together. We are creatures of association. This means that when we experience things, we link whatever we feel to whoever is around at the time. So for example, St. Joan takes Kenny on a really, really super fun roller coaster ride. Later, when you ask, hey, what did you think of Kenny? Even though all he did was scream in terror for three minutes and puke all over her shoes, she's gonna be like, wow, Kenny's really fun. <laughs> Point is, if you want the novelty to never wear off, if you want the honeymoon to never end, if you wanna be in love with each other forever, Make it a routine to always do new things together. Try new restaurants, travel, explore new places. Even if it's just half an hour away, you'll, you'll get to see the love of your life in a brand new light, reacting to a new environment, and you'll discover new beautiful things about each other. Do this, and you get to fall in love with each other over and over again. I promise. Let's cover the little things. Anyone makes an Asian joke on this <laughs> So, whenever you ask people, how do you know your spouse loves you? Usually, they'll be like, oh, it's all the little things. It's the little things that matter. It's the little things that he or she does. It's the little things that count. Well, it turns out, I actually have no clue what any of that means. Um, what are these little things? Where can I buy them? Nobody will tell me. And so I came up with a theory. I think the little things that show someone you really care are the times when you give them your kindness and your full attention. When you let them know that they matter to you, and you let them feel loved. Kenny, you work a lot. You, you might actually be addicted to workaholic. <laughs> Joan, same with you, lady. <laughs> so my last little bit of insight is this. When you are working away, say, on your laptop, and Joan comes home from a long day of work, she's like, whoa, what a rough day. She, she doesn't sound like that. <laughs> Don't, don't just mumble, oh, that's nice, dear, <laughs> and keep on typing. No. Show her that you care enough to drop everything you're doing, run up to her, hug her, kiss her, high-five her, flip her over, whatever, right? <laughs> but just let her know that you love her. There will always be more work to be done. Work is infinite. It never ends. But we do. We only have so precious few moments on this planet. Make them count by filling them with 
really pleasant moments of little things. At the end of the day, when you are old and gray, when you reflect on your life, in your final moments, you will not remember the deadlines, the clients, the customers. You won't remember how much money you made. Those things don't matter, but you will remember each other. You won't remember everything she said or did, but you'll remember how she made you feel. You'll remember how she inspired you, challenged you, supported you, encouraged you. You'll remember the little things. So please, take the time to drop distraction and pay attention. Take the time to be kind to each other. Just think, when your eyes are closing and you're smiling, and remembering all the times you've shown each other how much you love each other, just think of how beautiful and amazing it would be because of all that love. Just, just think if you felt worthy of that love. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Joan, we just met. <laughs> but I know Kenny. <laughs> and because I know Kenny, I know you'll be happy forever. Aww. Kenny, thank you for your friendship. Love you, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses to the beautifulest newlyweds on either side of the equator. Kenny and Joan Bain.